struggling to play these new games. You said you'll upgrade my PC for birthday, but New Year is also gone. Today I want something. What is up, guys? Vimal here. And this is Sheetal. And welcome back to our channel. Today we have a new objective for the video. We will be giving my sister's gaming PC a super upgrade. <laughs> you people know, right? Nvidia has been launching all the new Super Series cards in the last couple of weeks, and all of them have been hitting the Indian market one by one. And we have also got a lot of samples in the last few weeks. That is the reason. टॉप ऑफ द लाइन i chill x3 wow. variant of the 4080 super i mean look at this thing this is not just about like a gaming pc upgrade it this will be like a detailed benchmarks review and also we'll be doing some comparisons as well with some nearby competitors to this card so it's going to be like a very informative video so first of all make sure to like this video subscribe like. and click the notifications bell icon on and so also sheetal also comment about oh, yes. the card your thoughts so sheetal why don't you quickly unbox and yeah, you know give I'll our upgrade. audience a very first look at the i chill x3 variant of the 4080 super Ta -ta -da -da. damn this is a heavy box i'd oh, say my god my new gpu <laughs> Whoa. So as far as I remember, your gaming PC had a 30 series card, right? Yeah. Which one was yes, it? It was some 3070 Ti. 3070 Ti to 4080 Super is definitely a massive upgrade, guys. And oh my god, this is huge. It's a massive card, It's and what were you expecting? Huge. <laughs> <laughs> So guys this is Inno 3D's all new iChill X3 variant of the 4080 Super and it looks awesome with three fans here Yeah it's a triple fan design and look at this very nice build quality as well yeah. it has like a mix between metal and polycarbonate and i really love this two tone finishing as well gray and black sort of finish So guys in this video since my PC is getting an upgrade let me talk about the specs and configuration of this card like even i know this stuff even <laughs> sure, i sure. am a tech girl Go ahead <laughs> Inno 3D's 4080 Super is based on Ada Lovelace architecture, just like the regular 4000 series card, and is based on AD 103 GPU. And if you are wondering what's new on the latest Super card, then let me tell you. Firstly, it has more number of CUDA cores and faster GTDR6 X memory and slightly higher boost frequency. So, guys, as you can see on your screen, you can check out detailed comparison between 4080, 4080 Super, and also I've added 4090 as well. Uh, let me talk about the CUDA cores first. You are getting 10,240 CUDA. Of course, on the 4080 Super, which is slightly boosted and higher than the already existing 4080. If you look at the VRAM, right, you're getting the same amount of VRAM, just like the 4080, 16 GB GDDR6X memory with the same memory bus width as well, 256 bit. Only difference you can see is slightly a bit faster GDDR6X memory, and the memory speed is around 23 GBPS. Apart from that, the TGP L2 cache they're same as the already existing 4080. So Sheetal let's quickly install this 4080 Super in your PC and show them how your gaming PC looks like and guys to be honest now actually build her PC using all spare parts that I had at my place but anyways damn that is one beautiful looking gaming PC right I use Leanly's case and also look at the components high tech components I would say and not to miss out that beautiful i chill x3 variant of the 4080 Super from Inno 3D it's got beautiful RGB lighting on the front side that is also fully customizable and can also be synced with your motherboard rgb software if you ask about the specs and configuration her gaming pc is powered by intel's 12th gen i9 12900k pair that with rtx 4080 super with 16 gigs of gddr6 x memory 16 gb ddr4 ram clocked at 4600 megahertz and not to miss out all of that is being powered by a 850 watt power supply just have a look at these beautiful shots and i hope you enjoy the video
so we will be doing a lot of different testings guys we'll be playing like different triple a title games at different resolutions 1440p 4k resolution with nvidia technologies like ray tracing dlss on and off frame generation on and off and you'll get complete details right now so starting off the benchmarks with last of us again as i've told you last of us is a very graphic intensive game and budget segment or mid-range gpus really struggle playing this game at higher resolutions or with like high graphic settings because of their limited vram capacity but the new 70 class and 80 class can easily handle these sort of games because of the increased vram capacity so in this first clip we'll be testing out this game at 1440p resolution maximum ultra graphics and you can check out all the pc stats at the top left corner hey look at that not bad right i mean look at the fps results over there on an average we were getting around like 110 to 115 fps triple digit fps in last of us at 1440p max ultra now that is what i'm talking about guys the 4080 super edition card i mean just a couple of days ago we've reviewed the 4070 ti super edition right that was barely hitting around like 90 95 fps at the same settings and could not hit the triple digit fps but for the 4080 super looks like a walk in the park really good performance so far game feels buttery smooth guys muska gaming performance face no sorts of lags and issues now let's quickly bump up the resolution to 4k keeping the graphics same maximum ultra just like before and you can already check out the vram consumption guys i mean 13 14 gb damn boy that is a scene with this 80 class super card then where should the mid-range and budget gpus go Anyways, in this particular test, as you can see, on an average, we were easily getting around like 65 to 70 FPS. That is a very consistent 60 plus FPS, guys. On the 4070 Ti Super, if you guys remember, we were getting around like 50 to 55 FPS on an average. So comparing that, there is definitely a better distance between both these cards. So yes, you can play most of your AAA title games even at 4K maximum ultra graphics with a consistent 60 plus FPS. Very smooth experience, I can say. Moving on, let's also try out Cyberpunk 20. 77 because this is like a very demanding game and a lot of people always request me saying Vimal bro you should definitely add this to the benchmarks so this game also will be playing at different resolutions 1440p 4k with ray tracing with the DLSS frame generation on and off so in this particular first clip right we'll be playing it at 1440p maximum ultra graphics possible in the game and ray tracing and DLSS basically Nvidia technologies are turned off and we'll be checking out the raw potential of this card right now Okay, as you can see, on an average, again, triple digit FPS, guys, easily 120 to 125 FPS. And in intense action scenes, maybe like a lot of gun firing, bomb blasting, right? There, the FPS was slightly dropping down to around like 105, 108 FPS. But still, pretty good results, I would say. Quickly enabling ray tracing and keeping DLSS and frame generation off, these are the results. Okay, we were getting an average of around like 55 to 60 FPS. Impressive, I would say. I mean, this is the raw ray tracing performance of the card without any sort of upscaling used very good and consistent 60 fps gameplay guys you can easily play the game not an issue at all but wait until i actually enable nvidia's dlss and ai frame generation and there you go bam immediately noticeable difference right almost 2.5 times improvement is there where is 55 60 and now you're getting around like 145 150 fps at 1440p maximum ultra with ray tracing Man, 4080 Super definitely holds up its spot. And let me tell you, this is like a dream for all the gamers out there because I believe a lot of people usually play these sort of games at 1440p only on your gaming monitors. And 4080 Super definitely fits the requirement. So that is about 1440p test. Now let's quickly bump up the resolution to 4K. And now let's check out how does the card handle it. So in this first test here also, we'll be playing at 4K maximum ultra graphics possible in the game. And we'll be keeping Nvidia's ray tracing and DLSS technologies off. On an average, we were getting around like 65 to 70 FPS. Not bad guys. I mean, this is the raw rasterization performance, right? Even without any upscaling, you can easily play with like 65 plus FPS at 4K resolution. Quickly enabling ray tracing, frame generation, and also DLSS set to balance mode. And these are the results. Almost 2x improvement guys from 65 FPS to almost 110, 115 FPS on an average. So that sort of difference DLSS and frame generation can do. So those were the Cyberpunk 2077 benchmarks and moving on, let's also try out our all time favorite Spider-Man Remastered. This game also will be playing at different resolutions and this first clip will be starting off with 1440p maximum ultra graphics, again ray tracing and DLSS off. On an average, again, we were getting around like triple digit FPS, 155 to 160 FPS 
Quickly enabling ray tracing and DLSS at the same 1440p maximum ultra graphics, we can definitely see a dip in the performance because ray tracing is obviously like very demanding, right? And at these sort of settings, we were still getting around like 85 to 90 FPS. And lastly, trying out at 4K resolution as well, again ray tracing and DLSS off in this first clip, and we were easily getting around like 120 to 125 FPS, triple digit FPS raw performance without any sort of upscaling. And now quickly enabling ray tracing and DLSS as well, we were still getting around like 95 to 100 fps guys so that sort of results you can get on the 4080 super now that you people have seen the benchmarks and got an idea what the new 4080 super can do time to talk about some comparisons i'm pretty sure people are like very excited to know where does the 4080 super stand when compared with the already existing 4080 and the 4090 initially when the 4080 super was announced during the ces right everybody were having hopes maybe the new 4080 super would be very close to the 4090 but to be honest guys after doing in all these benchmarks and practically checking out the performance and gameplay results 4090 is still way ahead of the 4080 super nvidia has definitely kept a bit of distance and there was no way they'll be closing that gap to the titan class gpu 4090 anyways first of all let me compare it with the already existing 4080 so as i've told you during the intro only 4080 super is like a slight improvement over the already existing 4080 you're getting like slight increase in cuda cores faster gddr6 memory and two percent boost tech clock frequencies and all of that contribute to roughly around three to four percent of performance improvement not that major i would say i've tested and benchmarked variety of triple title games and at 1440p after testing like seven to eight games 4080 super was hardly around like two to three percent faster and at 4k we were getting slightly better results of around three to four percent so roughly that is a kind of difference you can expect over here so if you're already having like a 4080 right no need to worry the 4080 super doesn't offer like majority of improvement and you're still good to go for the upcoming years unlike the 4070 class series where the 4070 super was almost like 14 to 15 percent faster than the 4070 so i really wish you know the 4080 super also had that sort of difference but anyways this is what the current scenario is and if you compare it with the 4090 right 4090 is like in a complete different class and the main reason for that is it is based on the ad102 gpu whereas this one is based on ad103 and also there's like a huge difference in the amount of CUDA cores as well. You're getting almost like 16,384 over there and 10,240 over here. And not to miss out, they increased the VRAM capacity as well. I really wish Nvidia could have given at least 20 gigs of VRAM on the 4080 Super Edition card and that would have made definitely a good improvement I would say. Anyways, not to miss out the L2 cache as well. 4090 has like 72 MB of cache and you're getting only 64 MB same as the 4080 on the Super Edition card. And if you are comparing with the competition side right radeon 7900 xtx which is like very close competitor to the 4080 class series in terms of raw rasterization performance 4080 super is around like five to six percent slower than the 7900 xtx but not to miss out ray tracing performance if you are actually enabling and checking out ray tracing now 4080 super is almost 25 to 30 percent faster than the 7900 xtx so where exactly does the new super series card stand in the market it is somewhere in between the 4080 and 7900 xtx if you talk strictly in terms of rasterization performance so that is the whole super story going on right now and what do you people think share your thoughts in the comment section down below i hope you people got complete information including the benchmarks performance testing and also comparison for the 4080 super if you all enjoyed it make sure to like this video smash that like button and talking about the price as i've told you 4080 super is going to be priced even lower than the 4080 we're not yet sure about the exact pricing in the indian market but if i had to take a guess i believe the 4080 super might be priced somewhere around like 1.2 to 1.25 lakh rupee and that's it subscribe to my channel for more such awesome videos and i'll see you all in my next one